14 championship medals, including those three Olympic golds for Charlotte Dujardin and Vallegro. He has been an absolute wonderkind of the sport. The, literally, there are very few words left to describe them, as I was lucky enough to say in Rio. We may be looking at one of the best Grand Prix horses of all time, but let's not forget, we're also looking at one of the best Grand Prix riders of all time. And together, as a combination, they have not only set the existing world of dressage alight, but they have widened that world and introduced so many new people. She puts her hand and signals for the music that is in so many of our memories. Her Tom Hunt freestyle from the London 2012 Olympic Games. Sit back and enjoy Charlotte Dujardin and Vallegro.
The chimes of Big Ben, the Westminster Carillion, John Williams Olympic March, pomp and circumstance, it had it all. It was iconic, but perhaps never more so than on that one warm day in Greenwich in London in 2012, when Charlotte won the second of her three Olympic gold medals. Grand Prix Special and Grand Prix Freestyle medalists at the European Championships in 2013 and 2015. Special and Freestyle gold medalist at the World Championships in 2014. And of course, team and twice individual Olympic gold medalist, all in an international Grand Prix career on the British team that stretches back only to 2011. Charlotte and Carl and Alan Davis, hello to this wonderful group, and the owners and Barrett and Reddy Duarte will be back with us. Amazing pictures. So there. after that and fantastic freestyle demonstration of the one BBC that lives in our memory, but there's so many that how to train your dragon freestyle, the Rio themed one from this summer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. To those of you here at Olympia, to those of you watching at home, it's been yet another fantastic night of sport, of entertainment, and all of you are here, I'm sure, to say a fond farewell to a sporting legend. And I don't use the word legend lightly. This is a once-in-a-lifetime horse. Vallegro is a record breaker and a history maker. He's been a pleasure to watch over the years and over the next few minutes we're going to be speaking to many of the people who have played such a big part in the life of Vallegro. We'll even try and have a quick word with him too. Um, let's just turn our attentions to a group of people standing here in the shadows. It's important to thank everybody. There's, there are certain people who always get the thanks for Vallegro, but we must mention all the owners to Roly Luard and also to Anne Barrett because without owners, and I'm sure there are many of you here, you are the linchpins of all equestrian sport and it's a great honour to, to say thank you to both of you. Um, let's give them a round of applause ladies and gentlemen. Also here is Dickie Waygood, the chef to keep. Um, Dickie, can you put into words, which is going to be very difficult, just how much a horse like Vallegro has brought to dressage, not just in this country, but globally? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, first of all, to be a part of that journey is incredible. Um, but what you've got with Vallegro, not only has he got all the technical skills so well, but he's also got the character to go with it. And that character just goes out into the audience and you just feel you're part of it. And what we saw this evening, that test would have won the medal, the gold medal at the, uh, in London and the gold medal in Rio. It's absolutely amazing what he's done for the sport go globally. So what is your emotion then heading into this post Vallegro era? Is it excitement, fear? Is it just simply a new chapter? It, no, it, it, it's excitement because we have got, you know, four horses that are scoring above 75 at the moment. So we will be competitive at the Europeans next year. And then after that, the depth behind those horses, we've got some incredible horses coming along. And of course, we're going to miss Vallegro. And of course, it's a new era, but it's very excitement and it's a challenge. Richard Davison, just a, a word to you as well, please. Um, I know that you were so impressed with what you saw tonight. And I just wonder if Vallegro, as a youngster, had turned up at a different yard with no Charlotte, with no Carl, would he be the horse that we see and, and honour here tonight? Well, of course, that is a very, very good question because, I mean, we've had, obviously, we, we have world champions. We've had very, we've had fantastic uh, Olympic champions before. In my time, in 40 years, I've never seen a horse like Vallegro. He, frankly, he is the greatest. He's Muhammad Ali. He's whoever your great hero is, it's him. But the question is, he also needs a fantastic rider and he needs a fantastic trainer. And I think that it is the alchemy be between those three that have given us the, the privilege of watching the greatest combination in the world.
Before we speak to Charlotte and to Carl, I think it's time to bring in the superstar himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vallegro. I know we've got three very emotional people here tonight. I'm hoping that Charlotte's wearing waterproof mascara. Uh, Alan is sponsored by Kleenex and possibly beta blockers, although I'm not sure if either are working. And Carl, since his free salvage, has been seen sipping a clear liquid from a bottle. We hope it's rescue remedy. We can't be certain. Um, Alan, can I start with you? I don't ask this. How are the emotions? Um, it's been a complete roller coaster the last few days. Um, I mean, it's crazy because, you know, he's not going anywhere. Um, we still have him at home. I'm still going to muck him out every day. I'm still going to ride him every day. He's not going anywhere. But the, um, the wave of emotion from the public behind us with this wars is just incredible. And I think um, it's just... <laughs> it's, um... And it's just indescribable to think how everyone feels about this horse. I mean, he's just one in a million, what can you say? What are his favourite traits in your eyes? Um, he'll do anything for a sugar lump. He, um, he doesn't like mints too much, they make him sneeze, so uh, we try and steer away from sugar lumps. So it's just um, normal things, sugar lumps, grass, hay. Hay is a big thing, he will bang the door down for his hay net. Um, and poor things poor, always on a diet, so... <laughs> he's not very camera shy, he's a little bit like his dad. I think I might pop round and speak to him, in fact. Um, now, Carl, I know that you've... Well, first of all, congratulations on your victory tonight, again. <laughs> but we must talk about Vallegro. Um, at which point did you realise that you had a superstar in your yard? when Charlotte told me, I suppose, is a really <laughs> obvious thing to say. Um, well, you know, he, we, he's known as the professor because he, he did eat the book, the encyclopedia, when he was four years old. Uh, he's been a champion every year. Um, of course, when we realised he was a superstar, that was uh, when he really came to his first Grand Prix. And um, what he is able to do is he's able to take what he learns at home into the ring, which I know all riders will understand is probably a very difficult uh, thing to do because most of us end up in the ring uh, not getting what we get at home. Um, and that can be disappointing, but I think Charlotte and Vallegro have been able to take uh, all their performances from home to a ring and that's what gives them the confidence and, uh, and, the be and, and, and why it's so beautiful to watch because it's always ridden to a maximum, um, but with harmony as well. And testament to you as well for, because as an owner of this horse, as a trainer of this horse, I know you've been asked this a thousand question, that, that question a thousand times, but has there ever been a time where you've thought, oh, just let me have a go? Well, I'm only just going to tell you lot, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, of course, I haven't actually. I mean, it's been one of the best journeys of my life. Um, to watch Charlotte and Vallegro. I've loved every minute of it. It's um, helped me as a trainer, for sure, to see how it's evolved. Um, and, I mean, I know people always, uh, you know, heap lots of accolades on Charlotte and I, but, I mean, you know, quite simply, without this amazing horse here, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. I mean, he, he, he taught us, uh, you know, so much about getting there to Grand Prix, and um, well, I love it. I love watching it. And I'm the lucky one, you know, most people get to watch it, um, you know, once, once a year and I get to watch it every day. So um, I, I'm very, very fortunate. Carl, thank you. Charlotte, how are the emotions? They're okay. 
I'm trying to keep it together. And I know that you are, you, you really want to say that this is a retirement from competition, but we will still see Vallegro. He's not going to be hanging his uh, horseshoes up just quite yet. No, I mean, it is just literally from competitions. I would like to try and maybe do a couple of tours with him that, um, you know, he can go off and do some demonstrations because, you know, as everybody can see, he absolutely loves performing. He loves coming in front of big crowds. The more you scream and shout, the better he is. And um, why not? You know, he, he I wanted to retire him at the top of his game because he owes me absolutely nothing. And now we can take all the pressure off and we can just go around and, and really, really enjoy ourselves. And he deserves that. So for me, that's what it's most important. And I think anybody who watched your London 2012 performance tonight had mixed emotions because they're seeing a horse which is still at the top of its game, bidding farewell. But also, we've all watched that test so many times. There was almost a sense of, don't let it end. When we heard those chimes, we knew we were coming to the end. Could you sense the atmosphere in here? Yeah, I mean, it's the most incredible feeling when you come into an arena like this and everybody's so close and you can feel it. And, um, you know, to come and ride my freestyle, I haven't ridden that freestyle for four years. So the last time I rode it actually was here when I got the world record. So there was no pressure, of course. And it was one of those freestyles that I really struggled to, to make it fault free. I mean, I always had a blip which stopped me getting the world record. And finally, when I did it the last time uh, here, I managed to do it without a mistake and get the world record. But I think tonight, I think I would have beaten it again because it felt absolutely incredible and just finally before we let you head off into the sunset for tonight anyway just try and describe Vallegro for us because we get this close to him what's he like just in a day to day not necessarily to ride in a test to we, we all have seen those golden moments what is he really like just to work with he he is just the best, and I know that sounds really silly, but he is. He's the, he is, in every way, the perfect horse because he stands like this. I mean, he is so easy and lovely in the stable. Um, he's a joy to do absolutely everything with, and I mean, there is nothing that he's difficult to do. And you know, people fight over riding him on the hacking out days because he is the one that hacks up the road with his head in the bush, eating his way around. Um, and it's just, you know, you see him like that and then you see him like tonight. He's two horses and he's just the most incredible horse and he has the biggest heart in the whole world. He always gives me his very best and um, that's what I really love about him. And the moment that you will look back on fondly out of everything that you've both achieved together? Oh, there's so many moments. I mean, every single bit of it. I can't say I've ever had a ride that I've been disappointed with. I mean, I'm, I think London 2012 in my home crowd, you know, having everybody support me there. <laughs> that, was, that was the most fantastic feeling to, to win there. I mean, I was totally, I was not expecting at all to win an individual medal, let alone come away with a gold. So for me to do that, stand on the podium, was just the best feeling. But then, you know, going to Rio, I know it wasn't quite the same without all the support there that we had, but I knew everybody at home was still supporting and all around the world, people were watching. And I'd just really, really, really love to thank everybody that has supported us through our journey, because without that, it, you know, it just makes it even more special. And the messages we have and the people just, Facebooking, Twittering, like it is just absolutely incredible worldwide what we, the support we've had. Well, if I could just say thank you on behalf of everybody to, to you, to Blueberry Vallegro, because you have done so much for dressage as a pairing, not just here, but around the world. Um, we'll let you say a farewell, but thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause. Well, a super ceremony. We've heard from so many who've been such a part of this team.
Charlotte and Vallegro. Alan there, just helping with the gaff. Carl, of course, who's been the super coach. And Dickie Waygood, who we heard from chef to keep Richard Davison, who's been the backbone of the uh, British team for a long time. And of course, Roly Luard and Anne Barrett, the owners of this magnificent horse. And I think actually Charlotte captures the motion moment perfectly there with what's on her face. This isn't sad. This horse is going home. We'll see him again on the exhibition circuit, but he has absolutely gone out at the very, very top of his game. Five, six years ago, you might have said Totalas would never be equaled. And maybe one day we'll see the equal of Vallegro. But not for a wee while, I feel. And this certainly is the end of an era. But for Charlotte, with so many exciting young horses at home, it's not the beginning of the end. It may well only be the end of the beginning. On top of all those championship medals, twice the World Cup champion, he wowed the crowds in Las Vegas. And at Lyon the year previously. He came to New York this year, the city that never sleeps, and stood at the top of the Great White Way of Broadway in Central Park. And after his demonstration, Charlotte just invited everyone in the audience to come and meet him. And he is just such a quiet, calm, sweetheart of a horse. He stood there and just took their accolade after accolade, exactly as he's done from all of the best dressage judges in the world over his competitive career. Say the loss of a standard bearer, perhaps, but an exciting and a dynamic time for British dressage dawns. We don't necessarily say goodbye, Vallegro, but au revoir, certainly. But the thing we say most of all is thank you, Vallegro. It's been an amazing privilege to watch him. I know it has also for all the dressage fans all around the world. Through world records, World Cup titles, European titles, world titles and Olympic titles. The horse that has quite simply done it all goes out on an absolute high.
Thank you, Vallegro. And from us in the Grand Hall at the London International Horse Show at Olympia, it's goodbye and good night. Thank you for joining us.